So I finally got my hands on a Vox AV30. Let's check it out. Howdy guys, my name's Shane. Today we're checking out the Vox AV30 guitar amplifier. Let's check it out up close. Here's the top panel of the amp. As you can see, we've got a two channel amp. Both channels are identical to each other. So you can essentially set one up on clean, set the EQ how you like, as well as the overall output volume, and then do the same for the second one and select a different one, or you can select the same one and just change up the parameters. It's pretty cool like that. We have two clean channels, two crunch channels, two overdrive channels and two high gain channels on each, which is awesome. We have a foot switch input over here as well. And we can manually select between each channel using this little button right here. When the light is blue, we're on that particular channel. We also have an overall master output volume here as well. So you can have the amp either cranked as loud as it can go or anywhere from that all the way down. It does sound better once you get this actual master volume somewhere around 11 o'clock and beyond. That's in my opinion. The amp also has three different types of effects built in. We have a digital reverb, a delay, and a modulation. Now the modulation is a chorus. You can select how much of it you want just by turning this up. It's pretty cool like that. Over here, we have a couple of extra options that tie into the preamp and power amp section of the amp. We have a bright switch on and off, as well as a fat switch on and off. We have a bias and a reactor where this dr drastically changes the way the amp clips. So I'll show you that in the demo as well. One thing I love about Vox amps is they always seem to put a speaker output on the back of their amps. I think this is a really great thing. Even a lot of their smaller amps have it as well. So you can essentially run it into a bigger cabinet if that's what you want to do. You also have an effects send and return. So an effects loop built in. Power switches here. It's one of these sort of regular switches. It's a bit, you know, it's probably not my ideal switch, but you know, it's recessed under this, so obviously it's not going to get hit if you lay it on its back, which is good. And the power input here. I should also point out this is a closed back cabinet as well. So it's going to be a very focused type of sound in terms of its bass response. Usually open back cabs have a bit more spread in their sound. I really dig this particular sort of cloth here. The only downside to this is you can kind of feel the speaker under here. At least that's what it feels like. It feels like the speaker's in this section here. And if you were to sort of put too much pressure on the cloth, you might actually do some damage to the speaker. I could be wrong about that, but it does feel like I can touch the speaker, which, you know, so just make sure if you're gonna, you know, carry this in the car, you don't put it down this way in the car. Always put it on its back. So yeah, that is it. A huge thanks to Sky Music for letting me borrow this. I really appreciate it. If you live in Melbourne, check them out. All the links will be on screen and in the description below. And sorry about my microphone in the shot. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I'm playing my Tokai Love Rock electric guitar. This is obviously based on a Les Paul. It's made in Japan. We're going to start on the clean channel one. It's so on the top row over here. Both channels are the same, so it really doesn't matter which one we use. I also have the bright switch currently off and the fat switch currently on. <laughs> Got some pretty nice sustain, as you can hear, a little bit of delay and reverb. I 
Over to clean number two. It's got a little bit of hair on there at that setting. That sounds pretty cool. We also can control the gain as well. So we can back that off, turn up the volume more and make it more clean. Over to crunch one, let's give this a go. This is bridge pickup. Little more gain. And neck. Now it gets a little bit farty like that, so we're gonna back off the fat, take out a little bottom end. Over to crunch two now, let's try this on neck pickup to start with. Over to Overdrive 1, this works great for solos on the most part, I'll play some chords as well. take off. Over to Overdrive 2, let's give this a go. Cool. Over to High Gain 1, let's give this a shot. Again, two. Man, that's got a lot of gain. Far out. Let's try it now with the modulation, reverb, and delay on all at the same time. The modulation's a chorus. <laughs> Thank you. 
fat and bright switch on. I've turned the bias shift on as well as the reactor. Let's see if we can just use my volume control on the guitar now to get the amp to go cleaner. I've got it set to the overdrive one setting, which I really like. So this is just neck pickup with it on slightly. Now with the back up. I would say that's a big yes. You can definitely use your volume control to get it to clean up beautifully, so. Thanks again for watching folks, my name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Leave a comment why you didn't like it as well. Now, what's my opinion on the tone of this? It's all right, it's not the best practice amp I've ever played. It sort of has kind of like a scoop sound overall. It lacks that sort of 3D punch I was expecting from it. Some of the settings sound pretty good and it's very playable. So the overdrive settings are good, the clean settings are okay. It's all of those other settings that I've, I felt were kind of like its weakness in some ways. Look, if you're a metal player, odds are you're probably not gonna go buy a Vox anyway. You might, but I don't know anyone that really would go buy one of these to go play metal. The clean tones are okay. They get a little dirty, a little bit too quick. But that said, it has a whole lot of different options. But if you're just playing at home, it should do the job, but don't expect it to sort of blow you away tone-wise. I didn't really feel like it was the nicest sounding amp I've ever played. But that said, it definitely isn't the worst. Some of its pros are it's extremely light, so it's easy to move around. It has a whole lot of different sounds within the amp, and if you tweak the EQ, you should be able to get a sound that you kind of like. Some of the downsides of this would be that I find, like I said, you don't want to lay it on its front. I feel like the speaker is so close to the front grille, you just don't want to put any pressure on that. I think that would be a little bit of a concern, at least moving these things around. But like I said, I could be wrong about that, but I, when I put my hand up to feel where the speaker is, it felt like I was touching the cardboard, which isn't really a good thing. Listening back to the intro clip on the recording, it felt extremely scooped compared to what I thought I was hearing in the room. And I've been miking guitar amps up for 20 years, so I know it's nothing to do with my gear. It sounded loud in the room, but it just didn't have that 3D punch. Like, listen to any of my other demos, you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. It sort of has a more of a distant sound. But that said, I still enjoyed playing at least with the overdrive settings and some of the clean tones as well. I thought it sounded pretty cool. Another thing I really like about it is you can just dial in two of your favorite sounds and then you're done. I think that's a really cool thing. This kind of amp won't give you option paralysis like some of the digital amps out there where you've got menus you can dive through. It's literally like set it up to how you like the sound of it and then you're good to go. You can set the second channel up identically and then just have it a little bit louder so you can click click over to the next channel and just have a volume boost. I think that's pretty cool. The onboard effects are nice and simple and easy to use. You can simply just dial it up or down depending on how much of that particular effect you want. The reverb though can get a little bit washy, so just be careful of that. You don't wanna turn that up too much. I might've had a little bit too much in the intro clip, but that said, you know, I backed it off for the rest of the video. So hopefully it sounded okay. 
Overall, it's not a bad amp. If I was to give it a score out of 10, I'd probably give it about a six and a half, something like that. I don't think it's quite up there with some of the other practice amps on the market. But that said, it sounds okay for what it is. And I'm sure you could also use it with pedals pretty well on some of the cleaner tones as well, given that the cleaner channel, or one of the clean channels is pretty nice. So you could probably run your pedals into clean channel one and it should work fine. Having the option for an effects loop is also great as well as being able to daisy chain it out into an external speaker box. I love how Vox do that, I think that's great. So that's some of the pros and cons, you can weigh it up, but it's all subjective stuff. If you like what you heard, then it's the right amp for you. So just keep that in mind as well. Thanks again for watching guys, my name's Shane. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for future videos and I'll catch you all soon. See ya.